Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. If you guys and gals are into cars, check out Auto Rally Club or AutoRallyClub.com and AROTRally.com, A-R-A-R-A-T Rally.com. My dad runs uh, Auto Club Rally or Auto Rally Club. It's more more relaxed, fun, hit some checkpoints. AROTRally.com, it's my first language if you'll believe it. Uh, it's a little more competitive, but open to the public. Highly recommend you guys try it. I have a video on it. Check it out on my channel. Today, I'm gonna play it cool. That's why I'm standing in front of the fridge. I'm just gonna remove the windshield frame, a little spot well, a little hammer. Um, remove the top end stuff off the engine, like the distributor and the carb, because I wanna be able to clear that stuff when I pull the body off. And I'm gonna assemble my modular body cart. Uh, not the most exciting episode, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna oversell it, I'm not, because I'm gonna be honest with you guys, all right? I don't wanna BS you. You know, some car shows are always like, Today on blah, 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 we're going to blah, and then we're going to blah. But hey, this is just the stuff I need to do to make the shop or make the project work. And that's what I got to do. So come along. Plus, you guys help me. I show you everything because then you guys email me and you're like, do this, but then it, it's so helpful. It's like a lifetime of knowledge shared with me instantly. That's why YouTube is good. Anyway, stick around. Let's get to work. <laughs> going to reuse the hinge nor the windshield frame because it's the rust there so I just use air hammer to create a separation now I'm going to go in with the angle grinder and and grind out all the spot welds that'll make it easier for me to separate the hinge from the spot welds on the uh, cowl <laughs> I gotta move the camera because, uh, for obvious reasons. Stubborn. All right, two stubborns. All done. That's a technical term, stubborns. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. For these, I'm not gonna use a uh, spot weld cutter because I only have two years to complete the project, not 14. So I have, uh, my buddy Steve Olson's uh, dad passed away, left him a bunch of drill bits, he gave them to me. So I'm just gonna go into it enough to sort of uh, compromise the metal and then the air hammer will bust the, less the rest loose. I've already done it with uh, that one, that part. Family's home. Well, that's done. Now I just need to grind all these welds down. All right, it's a little later. I had to go spend time with the family, which is important because they support the project. And, uh, you know, if you abuse that support by spending too much time in the garage, you'll lose it. What I, by the way, I always try to always wear safety gear. I should have been wearing a face shield when I was grinding because I got black crud all up my nose and a piece of that uh, hinge hit me in the face. I was lucky it didn't do any damage to my mug. But, um, yeah, I should have been wearing a face shield. It's funny, I only got black stuff up one nostril. Uh... So I must have been grinding like that, and it was just coming up one nostril, because the other one was totally clean. Maybe that's TMI. What am I doing? So in order to get this body off, and why am I taking the body off? I want to get the body sandblasted. In order to get it sandblasted, I want the thing as light as possible to trail it around. I want to take the drivetrain out. I don't want to do it from the top. I'd rather do it from... I'd rather have access to the frame to strip all the fuel rails and everything and not be under the truck. So I'd rather take the body off, do all that work, and put the body back on. 
Maybe that's more work than it needs to be, but that's my preference. So in order to take the body off, I want to get the lowest point that I have to clear as low as possible. The highest point that I have to clear to be as low as possible. And right now, that is the stuff up on the engine. So I'm going to take out the coil, the distributor, and the carburetor. And then that should... That will leave the valve cover, and I'll take this uh, fan off. That will leave the valve cover as sort of the highest thing I have to clear. Some of you might be asking, well, you, do, you can just get the body blasted without, uh, without taking the frame with you, but I want to get the frame blasted too. I called up a couple places. What they do is they have a forklift there, and they just pick the body up off the frame, blast the frame, blast underneath the body, and then put the body back down on the frame. You bolt it up and, and trailer it away. So it seemed like a pretty good option to me. And so I'm going to take it. Right now I'm going to take some old underwear, stick it in the hole, tape it so nothing falls in there. Old tidy whiteies, tidy blackies I guess. Talk about TMI. Sorry for the people who actually know me as something other than a TV personality. Now seeing my underwear. It's probably going to leak a little bit of fuel. Should I be like they do on the power shows and be like, oh, I'm going to get a Scott paper towel because the paper towel is important. I'm going to get a Scott paper towel to clean up any fuel leaks. Yeah, we know they pay the bills. Of course, having said that, if Scott called me, I would say Scott paper towel every like three minutes. So can't really blame him. But I caught all that fuel in this Scott paper towel. And missed. Okay. Next, I'm going to take this carburetor off, which if you can't take a carburetor off, just don't worry about it. Just pay somebody to do it. It's too late for you to learn. Okay. Let's angle that uphill. Take out this gasket. It's amazing how much more crud there is on an old engine than a... I mean, I just replaced this gasket and there's already crud back again. And there's fuel down in that. Hmm. I shouldn't be doing that. There's that water. Oh, I don't know. Let me get some Scott paper towels. Is that engine oil? No. I don't know what it is. I don't care. Never going to use this intake manifold again. That's right. I said it. Ooh. Nice. This is a very important step. If you don't put your underwear in there, you will ruin, ruin your motor. If anybody wants a carburetor, by the way, I've got one for sale. And you know it works because you've seen it work on the channel. Let me know. I'll give you a smoking deal on it. These old belts, you can just throw these away. Just kidding, you want to keep these for reference. Once you get the new ones, you can throw them away. Okay, um, so when you're getting ready to disconnect the body, obviously all of your electrical needs to be disconnected where it connects from the chassis to the frame, especially if somebody's zip-tied stuff. Your fuel line, your emergency brake lines, um, your steering connection and your power steering lines and your brake lines hammer time oh 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 the music hits me so hard that it makes me say oh my lord thank you for blessing me with a mind something something and two fine feet this is more of a reminder to myself. Um, the power steering has a spacer here on this long stud. And now for my next trick, I am going to attempt to assemble my body cart. Luckily, luckily, I, I am an expert on Unistrut. 
I didn't even know what a Unistroke was. So the guy who sold me this told me about it. You can tell the guy who made this, the guy who sold it to me, was an electrician. Because only an electrician could come up with this. But it's pretty cool because it just comes apart when you don't need it. It's not like a welded body cart. There's no welding. Time saver for me, that's why I bought it. And it's pretty sturdy. And when I'm done, I can sell it. I'm almost done assembling the cart. Uh, one thing that dawned on me as I was doing it was, man, this feels a bit wide. And it is because the guy had set it up for an Acura Integra. Those are unibodies. They're heavier than a Bronco body um, because the whole frame and body is one. But they sit out on the seam, that pinch seam on the edge of the car. So it needed to be wide. With the Bronco, I, have the, I need the opposite thing. I need the rocker panels not to sit on this, but to hang over the edge. So it's too wide. But because it's unistrut, the sweet thing is I can just unbolt one half of it, slide it in, narrow it up, and that way the rocker panels will slide right over. I'll just take a, a, a bandsaw and lop off the, the loose edges and it'll be, boom, custom for the Bronco. Um, I'm not going to do it tonight, but I will do it next time you see this thing. It'll, it'll be custom for the Bronco. Then I'm going to put some 4 buys across it, bolt them down, and then... I think I have to build it up with a four by on the back half and it looks like a two by or a four by on the front half just to support the body mounts. And then uh, I should be good to go after that, I think. I don't know. Tell me if I'm doing something stupid because by the time you've seen this, I haven't finished. Believe me. I know it's weird, but I, I like weird. See you next time on Matt's Garage. Watch the gonads.